Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Jason here. I'm going to go over some preliminary intro things uh, by way of setting up the Confusion Reigns video, which you can expect to see posted in uh, roughly a week or two. I haven't played through it and shot it yet, but uh, again, I'd like to go over some uh, setup stuff. This is Scenario 12 from the Paratrooper module. It runs nine turns, and I've already gone over the background in the trailer video. This does use three map boards, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, the uh, belligerents include elements of 1st Battalion, uh, Grenadier Regiment, and 7th Army Sturm Battalion. Experience level rating of three. Let's see, yeah, that's for the Germans. You're looking at 12, 4, 6, 7 squads. An 8 neg 1 liter, an 8 zero liter, one heavy machine gun, one medium machine gun, three light machine guns, and two Panzer Shreks. For the Americans, we have Company D, 505th Parachute Regiment, experience level rating 5, and we're looking at 12 747 squads, a 9 neg 2 liter, 8 neg 1 liter, 7 zero liter, two medium machine guns, two uh, light mortars, and five bazookas. The uh, special rules for this scenario include uh, environmental conditions are moderate with no wind at start. All walls and hedges are considered a bocage. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that as well. The German player, and I hear something interesting, right? This is not a special rule you see every day. The German player may not move more good order multi-man counters during his movement phase than the current turn number plus the number of his current good order leaders, which they only have two. So on the first turn, you're not going to be able to move one more than three. However, each good order leader may exempt one multi-man counter from the restriction for that player turn, provided the leader and the multi-man counter begin the movement phase in the same location. On broken German units, may exit the board off the north edge without counting as casualty points. Uh, also, it says due to Ray's effective scouting, all this, U.S. units may expend one extra movement factor on turn one without penalty. Then we have voluntary break, which is not allowed, and units in upper level building locations uh, is encircled if it cannot trace a path free of enemy units or blaze to ground level through locations it could legally traverse if so inclined. I uh, don't know that I will be playing with uh, upper level building rules uh, in mind, and again, we'll get to all that in a second. Um, in the aftermath, which we won't go into now, the victory conditions include at scenario end, the U.S. player must have earned at least 12 casualty victory points and twice as many as he loses. So this is the setup. Were we to play it with <clears throat> the included map boards, we have board one on your left, board 24 in the middle, and board four on the right. Now, uh, the scenario does not entail use of the entire entirety of the uh, map boards, only half. So effectively, it's going to look like this, and it's going to look even different in a second. So that is what the scenario entails. Americans, of course, moving from left to right, and the Germans setting up somewhere in here. Now let's move to the tabletop, because this is where it gets interesting. So when we look at this tabletop, we only have, uh, by way of number of hexes, two of the map boards represented. Now we would have board one here, and board the uh, middle sandwiched board here, and then the third to the right board is not included. Now, I did not include that because the Germans are able to set up on the uh, middle board, which is what this is, the Americans are able to set up on this board. Now what I've done is set, since we're moving towards the Germans, I've set the Americans up, and we'll, we'll close in in a second, right on the edge of board one, again going this way towards the Germans, who are set up on this board. And I just thought, A, I don't have the uh, ability to represent a third board, but I don't know that I need to, in fact, I don't even know that I need 95% uh, of board one. All the action really is going to take place in the middle board here. Now, I do not have the exact 
uh, hex for hex terrain setup uh, in comparison with the ASL map boards. It's close. Uh, it's good enough for what I'll be doing, uh, but it's not exact. So uh, some terrain features to bear in mind. We do have a few walls included in this thing. And one there. We also have a hedge. Now it says in the special rules to treat the walls and hedges as bocage. Don't know that I'll be doing that. Uh, a little wheat field here, which is included on the map board. And a wheat field over there, which probably will not come into play as it's going to be out of play. So again, most of the action taking place here. Now, for the Americans, <coughs> if you remember, we have 12 uh, 747 squads set up. And the way I've done that is with the use of little miniature guys here. Now, they're not exactly to scale with the buildings. If I was to have the 15 millimeter buildings required for this on here, this would look significantly different. It's just not practicable to do, so I didn't do it. And, you know, it doesn't look that much uh, out of scale when you have these guys next to those buildings, although it is out of scale. These buildings uh, are paper cardboard things that I put together, used typically for Napoleonic stuff. And I think they're geared more towards, uh, you could argue, 6 to uh, as high as possibly 10, maybe 12 millimeter, but definitely <laughs> not 15. So, uh, <clears throat> again, with the, each of these guys, what I've done is I've actually, instead of s singular guys running across the board, I've based them on these little makeshift uh, stands, which uh, I discovered by accident... <laughs> fit a counter on them so I went that route and uh, as each of these are 747s and each of the Germans are 467s I don't need a squad counter on each of these guys and I'll be using uh, something else to represent a broken squad but when it comes to support weapons which is what you see here I do have that represented with the ASL counters now with the setup here uh, we have if we can zoom out let's see two squads there on the right uh, I take that back three squads and that includes a bazooka a light mortar and a medium machine gun <clears throat> in the woods there and now any hex with a tree is woods and then in this building hex we have a seven zero liter with a bazooka and another bazooka uh, totaling three squads and then when we come over here we have uh, another leader looks like three squads and a bazooka and then on the far end here So I guess you could say we kind of have a three-pronged fork coming towards the Germans um, Some squad here with a medium machine gun by the building and then through two squads here one with a bazooka another with a light mortar and a 9 neg 2 leader That's the Americans. That's how they're set up and it looks like they should be able to roll in to some cover fairly quickly. Now we have woods hex here they can hop to. We also have a uh, building there and a building there, a stone wall, a couple more woods hexes that could be gotten, uh, assuming the Germans don't get there first. Now I don't know that the Germans will be too hyped up on, on moving around and hopping everywhere. Uh, I think they're Happy, comfy, and cozy right where they are, so uh, they're just going to wait for the Americans to come rolling in. Germans are set up fairly sweetly. We've got kind of a, a courtyard here with a uh, squad and a light machine gun, 8 neg one liter. And then uh, next to it in a building, a light machine gun. If we zoom back out. We have on the hill here on the woods, another squad with a heavy machine gun. Uh, just below the hill, we have a regular squad and a stone building with a, next to it, uh, adjacent hex, a light machine gun, squad with a light machine gun. Now, as I don't have enough buildings to uh, faithfully represent each hex, I have bisected a hex where there are buildings in each hex. So that represents the buildings in this hex and this hex since it crosses the hex spine. And then moving to the center, we have a squad here 
with a Panzer Shrek, I believe. Uh, just a squad there. Squad here with a Panzer Shrek. Uh, another squad here. A squad with a medium machine gun and a leader in this hex. Uh, another squad and another squad backing that up. So 12 German squads versus 12 American squads. Each with a few uh, toys to play with. And I don't remember who goes first here. Should be the Americans. Should, should not. Yeah, the Americans do move first. So that's what we're looking at. If we zoom back out again, uh, all the action again, primarily going to take place on this part or segment of the terrain board. And again, Americans sweeping this way, trying to gain casualty points. And I think I may add some special victory points for the buildings on the hill, one or more. That remains to be seen. We'll clarify that in the video uh, in which gameplay takes place. So that's the preliminaries. Uh, again, I'll have this up uh, in a week or two, and we'll go from there. Thanks for watching.